Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Thank you for doing this interview with me. Only for you. <laughs> this is my dear friend, June. So I thought it would be really fun if we talked a little bit about your career path because okay. you have a really interesting background. Mm-hmm. You're very successful in real estate now, but you started out in fashion. Um, sort of. There was, there's one other thing before fashion. So yeah, it was kind of like a zigzag, different industry. Mm -hmm. So tell us. Um, Well, so I um, grew up in a very traditional Korean family and where fashion was looked upon as a hobby. So I wasn't really allowed to pursue that. Um, So uh, I decided to go to, um, go and study business. So in retrospect, it was really good. It served me well. So right after graduating from college, um, I took a job with Hanes as a market marketing rep. So I traveled around as a, you know, young kid had, uh, territories to travel to and company car and it was a pretty cush job, you know? So I learned a lot. Um, and kind of like the height of that little career where I was being groomed for um, be, to become a, a regional rep, mm-hmm. um, I decided to quit <laughs> because, you know, the passion for that fashion was just, it wouldn't die down. So, um, and, you know, at that point, my mom and dad were kind of out of my hair, so they didn't get to really tell me what to do. Um, so I quit and, um, it was quite a shock for a lot of people because, you know, I think this was, I don't know, 30 years ago, um, probably making about $80,000 a year, company car, expense account. It was just a unbelievably nice job. Mm -hmm. Um, so I quit and, um, at the time I was living in San Francisco and, um, wanted to pursue design and the biggest company there, uh, there was, uh, Levi's. And when I kind of just looked into it, um, they weren't hiring anybody in design department without a design degree, which kind of, uh, was a problem since I didn't have a design degree. So I, you know, part of my personality is I'm, I'm very stubborn. So when I decide to do something, I will try to figure out how to get in to the door. Um, That comes in handy too with real estate too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But um, so I found out that you could kind of get hired as a uh, assistant to assistant to assistant as a, (laughs) like a Gail Friday. I don't even know, like, do they call that now? (laughs) But um, you know what I mean? Like Gail Friday who kind of fetches you coffee and, Right. Um, lunch and things like set yeah. up the meeting room. So that was me. So I gave up my my job as a uh, regional marketer or marketing uh, rep as a um, assistant to assistant designer, and I took a job as a um, ten like earning a. I think I was making ten dollars an hour. That's um, a huge shift. Yeah. 80,000 expense account, car, yeah. $10 an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I'm a good saver. I had, I I had some are. money. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm cool. So I, I could live on $10 an hour. Um, so I, so fashion people are crazy, actually. They, they work a lot of hours. So um, we would work maybe like 70, 70 hours a week when it was busy. And then... Um, so long story short, I started climbing up the, the ladder and um, so became senior uh, designer uh, after years of being there. And, um, and my mom and dad, like I always thank them I, and I always say, you know, thank you for making me go and get a business degree because um, 
Oh, and then one of the things that I, I always do is I'm an observer. So I observe things and I, um, I'm not, I'm not uh, very, I'm not very big at talking a lot. So, you know, as you, as you know, this interview is very um, awkward for me. But um, so I, I observed a lot when I was, you know, fetching coffee and all that kind of stuff. And what I noticed was that there was a huge gap between designers and merchandisers. Mm. And for a company like Levi's, they really cared about, of course, they're a fashion company, but they really cared about the bottom line, mm -hmm. right? And the design department. So we would periodically get together, have this meeting, um, and there is a huge war between design and merchandisers because design wants to have like, okay, last season is last season. Let's go forward with the new black, the new pink, you know, and the merchandisers are always breaking and say, oh, wait a minute, you know, let's uh, bring back this style, this color that did well last season mm -hmm. because we made a lot of money. And so anyway, I don't even know why I brought that up. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm an observer. So I did well um, because I understood numbers. So I think that's my point. The point is that whatever career you have or whatever um, job you have, you really just have to understand the business aspect of it. Um, so I was able to bridge the gap between the crazy design people and just really number dollars and cents merchandisers. So it kind of came in handy. Um, and then uh, we decided, so... Um, my family and I decided to come down to San Diego because my mom was ill at the time. So this was um, about 18 years ago. So I had a full intention of pursuing fashion again um, because in San, San Diego, I ended up uh, making my own company and having my own labels. So coming down here, I just thought that I would probably just kind of continue on. Um, but San Diego is a different town, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't really have that much fashion and print on it. So it was a little bit difficult. So that's when um, my, I was married back then. So my husband said, hey, you know, why don't we, because he was in construction company and he said, why don't we, you know, flip houses? So that's kind of how I got into real estate. estate. Mm -hmm. Such an interesting thing. It's, uh, there's so many, I think, lessons in your journey. Number one, I agree with you. A business background doesn't hurt you in anything, right? Mm -hmm. No matter where you are. But, but I also think just the fact that you, you just do. That's one thing that I know about you is you're, you're definitely a doer. You may be an observer, but you're a doer. I observe for a long time and then I do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that your fashion has played out so well for you in real estate because I know you've staged houses of mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and true. they're beautiful. True. And I think that's your eye that has, right? Yeah. yeah. That is definitely a creative outlet that I love yeah. about um, being in real estate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just looking at and creating beautiful homes for mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a lot of listeners that are, you know, aspiring to six figures. Do you remember when you achieved six figures and what that felt like for you? Mm. So I remember, um, I think when it happened actually was um, when I was working for Haynes because I had a base salary and then there was a bonus, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that's a different feeling than when I achieved six figure for the second time. So I'll, I'll kind of talk about the difference. Yeah. Um, so when I was with Haynes, um, I was so young. I was in my 20s, um, really just didn't know the value of that kind of magnitude of success, right? Mm -hmm. It kind of came easy for me. Um, so it was almost kind of uh, un not very realistic in just uh, 
having the satisfaction of achievement, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, So that was that. And then the second time actually was uh, when I started in uh, real estate. So um, it's, you know, every transaction counts and every painstaking conversation that I would have to have sometimes with the opposing agent or, you know, with the clients, just breaking everything down for them. Um, And then after one year, like you look back and you're like, wow, this is what I achieved. Mm -hmm. Um, The feeling was just so much more satisfactory than, you know, just having a a salary job. And I'm not knocking anybody who has a salary job. And I don't know who your viewers or listeners are. Um, But I think it's just if you have that much latitude to go up as much as you can and you actually achieve it, it's just so much more rewarding. I don't know if that makes any sense. Well, I think it's also yours too because it's yeah. your business. It's different when I feel like having been in the corporate world and then having my own you know, business, I feel like it's a very different thing when you're working for someone else. It still feels like they own it. Yeah. Yeah. But when it's yours, it's yours. Like, I did this. This is something that I created. It's, mm-hmm. There's a different feel there. I agree with you. That's a mm-hmm. really, it's a really important point. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to the point of our listeners, there's a lot that are aspiring to six figures. And in your journeys over the years, I know you have taught me a lot of life, life lessons. So maybe pick one or two that you think would be really impactful for somebody that is wanting to move in to that six-figure area and perceives that as success, right? What is uh, one or two things that you think really helped you? Um, gosh, I know when you asked me for this interview, I kind of thought it through and trying to kind of break it down. But I think... Um, it's almost... It's almost like you have to have this undertone of uh, optimism, you know? So if you, you know, I think Ford said that if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, then you can't, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I was lucky to be kind of born with this optimism. I I always was the person who's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. You know, kind of like what you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, I observe and I think things through um, and I'm I'm very introspective. So I think a lot on my own, but then, you know, in the end, I kind of see a goal. So I think first thing is like, you have to have an end in mind before you start anything. Right. And then when you start seeing the end in mind, so whether it's uh, making six figures or whether you want to change career, you know, from um, marketing rep to fashion designer or designer to, you know, real estate agent or whatever it is that you want to do, you need to have a a end in mind. Mm -hmm. So um, having something in end in mind or and um, being optimistic I think it's a huge thing. So just to give you kind of like an example, I came here from Korea when I was 12. Uh, I think I just turned 12. And um, one of the things that, that kind of touches on everything that I talked about is that I didn't know how to speak the language. And I remember sitting in the lunchroom and just observing everyone and there, were, there was a uh, vending machine that had ice cream bars, right? I really wanted one, but I didn't know how that machine worked, right? <laughs> so then um, I would observe and I would have that end in mind. Like I visualize going up there because it was kind of scary to make a fool out of myself because I had no idea how to do anything. Um, so I just visualize, I'm like, okay, one day, one, one day soon this week, I'm going to go and pull that ice cream out and have it. Um, so that's like one example. It's such a great example <laughs> though. And, and another one is, um, so, you know, 
let's see, seventh, eighth grade, it was a struggle. Like I didn't know what was going on. I was just trying to learn the language. And then high school started and I could pretend I could kind of speak, right? So, and there were a lot more people that who didn't come from my middle school. So there was a lot bigger pool. And um, they, um, so I, I thought to myself, Again, like thinking about end in mind, I told myself that I'm going to be one of the popular girls, okay? So I had that end in mind. I visualized it and I observed everyone and I kind of picked out a group of girls who were popular. And then I thought to myself, I'm going to strike up a conversation, make some connection and be friends with them, right? So it happened to be... Um, um, a girl who was on the uh, cheerleading squad. So then that's what I, that's what I did. I became friends with her and I uh, got into a clique and became a cheerleader too. <laughs> and <laughs> so it's just kind of like that. You know, it's just an American thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I wanted to be American right. coming here. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was the end that I had in mind. Um, so I think those two things, optimism and having some sort of plan or vision. Mm -hmm. So is there a book? Do you prefer books or podcasts? And is there one that you would recommend? So I haven't, I haven't read a book in over a year, but the last book that I read was, and not because I don't like to read, it's just I have so little time right now. So the snippets that I, I take in from other people's point of view, because I think it's very important to... Um, open yourself up to other people's perspective and their life skills and their life's experience. So it's not that I don't see the value, but right now I really have only times when I'm driving, I cue my YouTube videos mm -hmm. of things that I want to listen to. I mean, obviously I don't watch the, the video while I'm driving, so don't worry, <laughs> but I, I cue it and then it comes through my car. So I listen to it. Um, I'm very interested in global economy, so I'm just, that's kind of like what I'm feeding myself right now. Mm -hmm. But um, the last book that I read was Grit by um, Angela Duckworth, I think. Yeah, so that was an amazing book. Um, I kind of have the grit naturally, I think, because I'm stubborn, um, and, you know, you ask anybody who's close to me, especially my dad, he will tell you I'm very stubborn. So um, I think once, if you're resolved in getting something done, that's kind of what the grit is, right? Yeah, I love that word, resolve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just decide this is how it's going to be, and you just do, do. it, Yeah. you know, one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And then you just never give up right? But that book is really great because she kind of, she's a, I think she's a very analytical person. So she kind of broke it down to stats mm -hmm. and people who are this way or that way. Which so, you love. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was great. So what am I not asking you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean... I don't really offer information about me without that. being asked, but if you ask me, I will <laughs> tell you. I thought I might get one over on you this time. <laughs> so you came to the U.S. at an age that could have been really detrimental, honestly, mm -hmm. and you really have excelled. I mean, you are, you are kind of the epitome of success for someone that moved into this country, right? And I think oh grit gosh. is a really great way to describe it. But, but as a mother, which you are exceptional at, what do you hope that that conveys for your children to carry forward? How about if we close on that? Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what you're asking about. So me being a mom, mm -hmm. um, how I'm leading my life, like what does that mean to my kids? Yeah, like all of the things that you've been through in your life, what mm -hmm. do you hope that your children are able to take and move forward with all of the life lessons and mm -hmm. the success, whatever 
whatever that means, right? Um, I think the... I think one thing that I want them to know is that a uh, balance of knowing that they could do anything they put their mind to it and also uh, what God's will is for them and um, so that they don't fight it. They don't, you know, um, so it's not a so much of climbing, mm -hmm. but... Uh, because I believe that each of us are um, endowed with our own unique ability and um, skill sets and gifts, you know, and that they just need to realize what it is that they have been given and be faithful to live that out according to God's will. And um, the ultimate goal is how... You know, after you kind of take care of your own hunger and, you know, roof over your head and all that needs, the next comes, how could you influence your, um, your neighbors, right? So um, I hope that they could look at my experience and wisdom and, well, believe me, they're not taking any wisdom from me right now you have because teenagers. they're teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> so they're convinced that I'm the least wise person in the world uh, right now. But hopefully, you know, they take away and say, you know, um, what my mom always says is, you know, find purpose. Find purpose that God gave you and do it well so that people who's looking at you um, is positively influenced by you. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> I'm an introvert. That's why it's painful. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so good. I knew you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.